trying to make our way to our car. We had been on a day hike and the weather had turned on us. The weather report had said there was very little chance of rain and yet there it was pouring on us as if someone from the heavens were sobbing uncontrollably. We made our way down a path next to a river and we were looking for a bridge, and as soon as we crossed that bridge, we would be at the parking lot where our car was. I was very concerned about my daughter, Raya. You see, we were dressed very light, and she was not only violently shaking, but she had jerky movements and was kind of clumsy, and her words were slurred together, and I realized these were the first signs of hypothermia. And so we hurried as quick as we could down that path. And the wind blew against our faces and our ears. Oh, and it hurt. And in the wind, it seemed as if someone was moaning. Me go. Me My children, my children, the words chilled me. These were the words of La Llorona, the weeping woman. And I knew at that time I had a crucial decision to make. And for you to understand this decision, I must share with you the legend of La Llorona. Once there was a beautiful woman named Maria. She was known far and wide for her beauty. And one day, a tall, handsome man came and fell in love with her. His family did not approve because they were wealthy and she was not. However, the man and Maria decided to get married anyway. And so they married and built a house across town away from their disapproval. Soon after they were married, they had twins, a daughter and a son, and they were so happy. However, Maria's husband had a job that required him to travel frequently. And so he would go and come, go and come. Every time he came back to the children, he would laugh and sing and play. But to Maria, he hardly looked at her anymore. He never caressed her cheek or held her hand. And it wasn't long until he left and never came back. A while later, Maria was at the river with her children doing some washing. When Maria noticed across the river a woman walking by, she was holding a baby. And next to her was Maria's husband. And as they walked completely past, Maria was distraught. She grabbed her children by the hair, pushed their faces in the water until the breath was gone from them, and allowed their bodies to float down the river. A few minutes later, Maria realized what she had done. She ran into the river, ran after her children, 
children may say she drowned. However, her spirit wanders the rivers of the world, searching for her children. Mis hijos, mis hijos. And she sobs and she cries. And that is why she is called La Llorona. And now, if you ever hear La Llorona, you are to turn around and go back because anyone who encounters La Llorona is in danger. And so you can see how I had an important decision to make. But my daughter, she was in danger of hypothermia and there was no shelter anywhere to go back. So go forward we went and I tried to push the fable out of my mind and the cries of mis hijos. And finally, we saw the bridge in the distance. Mom! What? Do you see the woman on the bridge over there? No, I saw no one on the bridge over there. Oh, she's gone now. I was very disturbed by this. But I realized my daughter was not in her right mind as she was going through early stages of hypothermia. And so we hurried across that bridge and I reached in my pocket to get my keys. They weren't there. I checked my other pocket. They weren't there either. I checked all around. Oh, Araya, I'm so sorry. We need to go back. I must have dropped the keys somewhere. And Araya had this look of desperation in her face. But as I looked across the bridge, I saw there was this weeping willow there. She could be sheltered from the storm, at least for a little while under there while I looked for the keys. And so I had her sit under there and I said, do not move. I ran down the path, desperately searching for the keys. And luckily for me, they weren't far at all, right in the middle of the trail for me to find. I picked them up and I looked back and I realized this is where Araya had seen the woman on the bridge. And I saw the woman on the bridge. She was more of a shadow than anything, but there was no denying the long, dark hair. She seemed to turn toward me, and then I couldn't see her anymore. I ran and ran down the path, Araya, Araya! And as I approached the river, I saw Araya on the other side. She was walking into the river. Araya, stop! Stop! She was under some sort of trance. Yo soy como la chile verde llorona picante, pero sabroso. Yo soy como la chile verde llorona picante, pero sabroso. I jumped in the river just as Araya's head was being submerged into the water. And I pulled and pulled and struggled to keep her head above water. But it felt as if she were being weighed down, as if something or someone was holding on to her. Desperately, I kept pulling her up. But I lost my footing in the river. I slipped and let go of her. I saw her head pop up over there and then over there and I was so disoriented in the water that I reached out trying to find her and finally I felt her hair in the water. I pulled and I pulled until finally I could get my arms under her shoulders and pull her out of the river. I brought her into the car. I kept her as warm as possible as we drove home. I said, Araya, what happened? Why did you walk into the river? And she said, oh, mom, I'm so sorry. I thought it was you. And I thought you were taking me somewhere warm and safe. And at that moment, I felt so sorry for La Llorona. Te quiero las que mi vida llorona que más quieres, quieres más, te quiero.